Good morning, church. Good to see everybody out today. Today, this is the day the Lord has made. We can rejoice. Be glad in it. Yeah. His job is to make it, and our job is to rejoice. I'm glad to, glad to see everybody. One of, the, one of the things that you can, you, can, you can have the faith that something good could happen to you today is that God is not broke. God is not broke. God is not bankrupt. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. And the universe is is incredibly abundant. There's just, when you walk out these doors in a minute, there's just an incredible plentitude out there. And there's enough for me and you. Plant that seed. Let's, Let's pray. God, you who made us, redeem us, sustain us, put us in a marvelous creation, and tell us to believe. Help us to believe that You do own it all, not only own it, but want to share it with us. Uh, Even your presence, this service, we ask you to come and bless us now. Well, thank you for it in Christ's name. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 576, Rise Up, O Men of God. Folks, I'm going to suggest that we change this a little bit and rise up. O Church of God. Our first three stanzas, please stand and join us. That's a great hymn, Dave. Thank you. A great hymn. Y'all can be seated. Let us, let us pray. Heavenly Father, how, how wonderful it is to be able to celebrate life. Even, even the birth, or, or the, the beginning of a new life that's on its way in this congregation. We pray for safe passage for mother and child. We thank you for those coming off surgery, coming off treatment, for their returning health. We ask you to Continue to let them go from grace to grace, from strength to strength. We thank you for the privilege of just being here, of being able to worship freely, of dreams and vision that that you not only give the young, but but the old. As you said in the latter days, old men will dream dreams and your young men will see visions. We thank you for that capacity for hope and faith. We ask you to surround those who've lost loved ones this week. That's a a heavy, heavy thing. We ask you to grant them your peace that passes all understanding. For those uh, in financial difficulty or depression, or physical ailments, we pray your touch and power and grace. For you are able to save unto the uttermost. And Lord Jesus, we thank you for our church who has stood the test of time ever since 
56. We ask you, Lord, to continue to be our guide and friend. We want to rise up again. And thank you for the opportunity to do so. Now, Lord Jesus, we pray the prayer that you had us to pray for many, many centuries, and we now pray again this morning as you said to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our affirmation of faith you'll find in the bulletin. This is the Apostles' Creed, what we believe. I'm going to ask you to stand and remain standing for our ancient hymn of praise, the glory of Patri, if you would stand. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. seated. God, for every good and perfect gift, we give you thanks. We, we don't, we, we, our faith is that we, you don't need anything. You, you are the Lord God, creator of all that is and all that will be, the, the Alpha and the Omega from whom all things come and are sustained and who will recreate everything at the end of time. What we need to do, we, we need this chance to give. It's, it's us that need this. So we thank you for the privilege of giving. We ask you to bless it now. In Christ's name, amen. When we think of stewardship, we think of leadership, action, faith, prayer, time, talent, and treasures, all necessary to share the good news of Jesus. And the way we see it, we have been given a grand opportunity to rise above the ashes of our past and to renew, restore, and revive, to let our light shine for all to see. We are standing here before you to encourage each of you to find your place, get excited, get involved, and get moving and let your light shine. Matthew 5, 14 through 16, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill can't be hidden. Neither do, people, neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. This is a fresh new start, and let's make a difference for this community and this world. As John would say, hello, church. Are you ready? <laughs> yes, we are. Let your light shine. Thank you. Rise, if you would stand with me and rise up, church, and we'll receive his tithe and our offer.
Please be seated. Choir, a great old, old hymn of the church. Scripture for today's sermon is taken from the book of Genesis 3, 1 through 7. All the way back at the very first, the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the servant, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that's in the middle of the garden. Nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, you won't die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and the tree was desired to make one wise, she took the fruit and ate and she gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate. And this is not in the scripture, but later on when God asked Adam why he did what he did, he throws his wife under the bus. Y'all recall that? She made me do it. <laughs> and, then, and then Eve says, the snake made me do it. The eyes of both were open, and, then, and they knew they were naked. They didn't know that beforehand. Sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. When, when y'all go outside in a moment, when you go, we get ready to leave. When you walk outside these doors, uh, if you can think about it, I want you to look around for just a second, maybe on the drive home, and look at a beautiful day in Corinth. Just a beautiful day. Maybe take a walk outside later on today if you like to walk or some of y'all run or whatever. And just look around. Everything that's out there, with one exception, is in its place. Everything is out there is doing exactly what the Creator designed it to do. 
The rock is in its place. The squirrel is in its place. The tree is in its place. The flower is in its place. The stars are in their courses. As Shelby Foote quoted in one of his great books on the Civil War, the stars are in their place. There's only one thing in all creation that's really out of sync and out of whack. Y'all want to take a guess at what that is? It's us. It's the human race. Faulkner, who's certainly one of the great, is the greatest Mississippi author, 20th century, maybe the greatest American author, 20th century, he said, somebody asked him what does he write about, he said, I only write about one thing. He said, I write about the human heart in conflict with itself. We're the only thing that is not aligned a lot of time with the will of the one who makes, the creator. I, you, you think sometimes things, I don't know how to, you know, sometimes, it's easy to explain the great things, the marvelous things, the miraculous things, the, the saints and really good people can do. And we take that for granted. Uh, almost, but then you read, and then we had had something happen in our part in our county about a month, two months ago now, and I'm not going to go into all details, but we we did we had a 12 or 13 year old boy deliberately invite a friend to spend the night at his grandfather's house plotted this whole thing out, and killed him the next morning. Twelve and thirteen years, twelve or thirteen years old. Now, how does that happen? There, he's up on capital murder. I didn't think you could charge somebody that young capital murder. Yes, you can. Started off with animals, by the way, what he did. How does that, how can people be incapable of such beautiful, amazing stuff and then go to the depths of depravity and evil and just do things that most of us can't even get our minds around it? So, Genesis is a fabulous snapshot of what went wrong. And, I, and I'm, all, I'm not going to get into all, I can't get into all of this today because it's too deep and too vast. But Genesis gives us a great snapshot and this, this scripture is a beautiful part of this today. Let me share with you three things that are in Genesis and, and buried in this one as well. Number one, that God created everything good, not perfect. Good, not perfect. But not bad. That, that, that he looked out and called it good. And that everything was there that the first couple wanted. Everything was there. Every need provided for. Everything was there. That is the will of the Creator the Creator is a God of abundance. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. There, there's, he, he's made everything that is. His will is for His children's good. And, and it's really important for some of y'all within the sound of my voice not to look on the creation, and by extension the Creator, as something or someone of scarcity which many of you do. And it's easy to get in that habit where we look up there and we go, oh, I'm not going to have enough. There's not going to be enough. There's, there's not enough friends or there's not enough health or there's not enough life or there's not enough time. There's not going to be enough money. There's just not enough. It's an easy trap. It's an easy trap. It's not true. But it's going to be true if you believe it. 
because the world is a mirror of the way you're looking at it. I had a, a, a church member down on the coast who was very, very, let's just say that he was very well off down there. <laughs> he took my boy and I riding in his plane over the coast, uh, and it was great until we came in for our landing. I will never get in a plane piloted by a church member again. <laughs> ever, 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 ever. He must have bounced that thing four or five times <laughs> before he settled it down. But he, he, God bless him, he was just an unhappy soul, unhappy soul. And he finally opened up to me. I'd been there for a while. And he finally opened up to me and said, he, he said, I can't get my hands out of the cookie jar. I said, what do you mean by that? He said, I can't get my hand out. Now, somebody had used the illustration, y'all had heard it before, of the monkey and the cookies in the cookie jar. And a monkey so greedy that he wants it all, and he'll stick his hand in the cookie jar, and, he's, and, and he, you have to break the jar to get it off his hand, because once he puts his hand in, he closes that fist down, and he can't get it out. And he said, I'm, I'm that monkey. He said, I know I want too much, I know I want it all, and I can't get my hand, I can't stop it. And it, it was making him an unhappy man. Like a monkey is, if he can't get his hand out of the cookie jar. God looked out, created everything that's good, and you are not going to lack. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Woo! Y'all can get happy anytime y'all want to out there, church. I shall not lack. I'm not going to come up short. You're not going to come up short. You may not get everything you, you think you need. You want. You may not get it all. But nobody gets it all. Show me somebody that gets it all. Please, stand up. Anybody here? You got everything? Don't see any hands. Nobody, nobody gets everything. So get used to good and, uh, and abundant and everything you need. Number two. It's interesting here what throws Adam and Eve and then Adam off course is that they believed a lie. It got in their head. Some bit of information got in their head that was not true. The serpent was very wise. All they had to do was, did God say that? I mean, they were living in paradise. And then the snake gets in their serpent to Satan, you know. Did God say that? He didn't say that. Did God say that? He didn't say that. It, uh, it's not really true, is it? All those promises, all those... Is that really true? It's not really true. Got in here. And that's how people get really in trouble because the world for most of us starts right here and ends right here. And we are transformed by the renewal of our minds. We can either be conformed or transformed. Conformed to this world or transformed by the Creator, the Word, the Spirit, the Lord. And the mind becomes a very different thing. I mean, you can spot, you can see it when, you can tell somebody where a mind is aligned and you can tell somebody when that mind has gone off the tracks. And it begins with the information you're inputting. Garbage in, garbage out. So be careful what you let in here. The serpent said, did he really say that? He didn't really say that. Y'all have heard me warn you before, and not that I don't do some of it, some of it's in moderation, but man... Some of the stuff on TV, a lot of the stuff on TV, a lot of the stuff on radio, and a lot of stuff on social media is not only not true, hello, it's poison. 
And if it gets in your head, it gets in your body. Third thing, I want to share this with you too. That the basic sin of Adam and Eve was that they overreached. They went too far. They wanted it all. They wanted to get it all. They had every tree in the garden. How many trees are out there in the Mississippi forest? <laughs> Hundreds. They had every tree, everything they needed. And the serpent said, what about that one right in the middle? And they said, well, God t- said not to eat from that. Well, did he really say that? And they wanted that one. And when you and I overreach is when we get into trouble. We don't get into trouble by underreaching. We get into trouble by overreaching. We think we shall be as gods. We can have it all. We can do it all. Have as much, fill in the blank. I can have as much blank, blank, blank as I want to. Blank, blank, blank as I want to. Blank, blank, blank. As I just keep, keep, it, keep it coming. No, you can't. Limits are built in. The whole creation groaneth together until now, and we with it ourselves. There are limits to everything. The whole creation is designed to have limits on it because it is not God and we are part of that. But when you act limitless, well, they wanted every tree. I had it all. They went for the whole thing Fourth down and 20, and came up short. And the whole world changed after that, and we ourselves with it. I want to leave you with this. This is why one of the reasons Jesus taught more on money, he taught more on money than he did about sexuality, more than even life and death, he talked more about money because it was that, it's that powerful. So let me, sh- let me leave this with you. If God is a God of abundance, which he is, if information that we need to align ourselves with is primarily in the Bible and in the life of Christ, which it is, and if our primary sin is overreach, which it is, the reason the tithe, and I'm going to get real specific, is so powerful is that if we don't understand that it's based in the scripture, that it's for our own good, we'll never know the joy of what it means to give, to to spend our life in God's alignment, including our finances. That if God's tithe goes into the storehouse, then God will do more with my 90% that I keep than 100% that I don't. that I hoard all to myself. He'll do more than 90% than if I don't give it away and it becomes overreach. Now, I don't mind sharing with you. I need to say this one time, and I'm not going to say this again. But Jennifer and I are delighted. to. I tied my, what y'all are good to get to me, I tied this back into this church. Now, we also have, at Jennifer Sauer, we also do some other things, too, and then we go past that when we can and when the opportunity arises. And I've learned that there is a blessing in the tithe that it first needs to go to the storehouse because that's the alignment. It first has to go to the church. And it's in line with my values, so I'm glad to do it. But where it goes past that, we... We give to St. Jude's, we give to Shriners in Atlanta, Shriners Hospital, World Vision. But my point with all this is to say this doesn't make her better or worse, but it certainly makes me a better steward of my 90% than I was before I started tithing. And it will you too. I, it, at some point, I have to get specific in how this is appropriated. God, let me leave you with this. It's amazing where you find people that believe God is abundantly good to them 
and how much joy is associated with their lives. The most miserable place I ever walked through in my life was a mall in Switzerland, which has the highest standard of living in the world. And I walked through that mall with people that were worth a gazillion dollars on either side. Now, I'm not, I'm just, listen. I, I, Wesley said, make all you can, give all you can, save all you can. So <laughs> this is not about either being too poor or too rich. But I'm telling you, the most miserable people I've ever saw were folks that never learned that God was going to get them. Everything they, they needed, that understood that they were aligned with, they were, with their creator, and they had learned to give their life, to give their heart, to give their time, to give their money, and all the joy that was a result of that. I, I wish that for all of you. It's a discipline. And I wish that for all of us. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 581. Lord, whose love through humble service. On the first and third stanzas, please join us. real quickly as we close punch somebody if you got somebody next to you punch somebody lightly punch them and say you're going to have enough tell somebody you're going you're going you're going to have enough tell them tell them that come on y'all can say y'all can open your mouth tell them that you're going to have enough somebody needs to believe that today and i hope you take that with you now, now unto the one who is able to do with you far more abundantly. Y'all say abundantly. Than you think or ask. All dominion, power, right, riches, <laughs> yeah, wealth, dominion. Be the Lord Jesus Christ now in the church and in the age to come. Amen.